Yeah, and I'm waiting for this. Hey guys, this is Press Any Button, and here we are for the first proper part of our Rail Shooter series. Today we're just going to be implementing a reticle, just as you saw in the demonstration there. The reason why we're going to have a reticle is to have a little bit more immersion in our game. I thought it would just be a nifty thing to start off with something simple so that we can ease ourselves into this new tutorial. So how do we create this reticle? How does it work? Well, our reticle will replace our usual cursor that we have with a type of texture that we would have created in something like Photoshop. Now, what I did is I created these little bits that you see down here in the inspector in Photoshop, and I saved them as a PNG file in my assets folder. So all you gotta do when you're in Photoshop, you go to File, Save As, once you're comfortable with what you're working with and then you save it in the assets for your project. You can also do the same thing by just importing something from online. So say if you look up crosshair or something on Google Images, find a nice PNG that you like. Make sure that the size isn't too big. So I went for something that is 360 pixels by 360 pixels because I didn't want my cursor to be too big. And then you just save that in your assets folder as a PNG with a transparent background so you're not having like a block of white or black behind your actual crosshair reticle thing. Once you've done that it will appear here and the first thing that you got to do is change the texture type. So by default it's going to be set to default but that's not going to work with our system as we have it so you're going to set your texture type to cursor and then just leave it at that. Now let's think about what actually tells our cursor to change into a reticle. So there was one thing that we needed to accomplish here. When our mouse is in the game view, so in the view of the main camera, we need that reticle to replace our mouse. So initially you'd think that we could apply that to the main camera just straight away. Well there are methods to do that, but we've got a different method. So as a child of our main camera, we actually have this plain game object. So what I did to create this game object is I right clicked, I went to 3D object and then I hit plane. I then scaled it up and rotated it so that it would match the viewport of our camera. I also manipulated the viewport of our camera using these little nodes here. That meant that this plane would cover the space that is visible for our game. So even if we go to the extreme edges of our view, our cursor wouldn't revert to this standard cursor that we see as we edit our game, but it would remain as that reticle as long as we're actually in the game. Now you would have noticed that I hinted to the fact that our plane is actually controlling whether our cursor is set to this default or to the new textures that we've created here. So how does our plane do that? Well, through a script, of course. So in the inspector, we just want a couple of things to be set. A mesh collider is fine. We don't need to do anything with that yet. And something that you'll be missing, which you see that I have here, is that I have a reticle script. Now, you can also see that I've mistyped that, but let's ignore that. What you're gonna do is you'll go to add component, you type in NE, it'll give you that option for new script. And then if you call your script reticle by that spelling, because that's the correct spelling, and then hit create and add, it'll create a new script. Once you do that, open up your script by hitting those three dots and then go to edit script. Now I'll see you guys in Visual Studio. Okay, so here in Visual Studio, you see that our script is very simple. We've got a few public classes here, things that we can manipulate in the inspector. This includes our texture 2D, which is going to be our cursor texture. So we're going to use one of those textures that we've either created or imported from online. 
and then you have public cursor mode now the cursor mode is going to affect the dimensions really of our cursor or the size so it's going to be set to auto we'll do something with that in a second auto pretty much means that it's just going to use the general size that we have for our cursor currently so no matter what the size of the image that you've originally imported is it's going to snap straight to the size of our cursor here which is in the typing cursor visual thing we got a public vector 2 which is our hotspot our hotspot is essentially where we get to click and interact with things so if you really look closely at my cursor right now so if I want to hit back I have to interact with the top left bit of my cursor if I try the top right you see my cursor is over the icon but it's not gonna work it's not a complete box if I try the top it's not gonna work the only part that I can actually interact with things with is that top left bit so literally the point of my cursor here which is the very top left part of my icon is the hotspot and we can manipulate that because our textures may be a little bit different one thing I neglected to mention is when you create your textures you'll want to have them centered as much as possible because there's a very simple method to just getting them centered in nicely so your reticle needs to be at the very center of the screen so avoid on mount enter when we enter the space of the game object that this script is attached to our cursor texture is going to be set to something different the hotspot is going to be set to something different our cursor mode is going to be set to something different and all of these things are going to be things that we're going to affect so the texture is the, the literal visual aspect of our cursor the hotspot is where we can click so we're going to manipulate that to make it so that our hotspot is the center of our cursor texture and then our cursor mode is going to be whether it's the size of our icon as we see it by default or a different size which we can actually change which that's what we're going to do we're going to have it as a different size to our cursor because our cursor is a little small then void on mouse exit you just do the exact opposite so all of those things become untrue we set our cursor to default and you know it just goes back to normal from there okay so that is our reticle script sorted once you've got that done all you got to do is hit save and then head back to unity once you're in unity you're going to see that the inspector for your plain game object has changed slightly under the reticle script you'll see the cursor texture all that stuff have appeared those uh, public classes that we can use so I have my reticle set to reticle 1 I can also set it to a different reticle because I've created different types and you can see that all of their texture type is set to cursor and I've just not touched anything else now with cursor mode what I'll do is I'll set it to auto so you can see what actually happens before you leave it at auto because some of you might actually prefer us having this the same size as our original cursor who knows and our hotspot each of the values in the X and Y box have to be half of the values in terms of our original image so Along the x-axis is 360 pixels along the y-axis it's 360 also so it's just half that so our hotspot is going to be right in the center there so i'm going to play this and we'll have a look at what we've done so far okay so you can see that i have my reticle it's there it's working but it's not really working as we intended a good thing is I've got other game objects in the scene which can interact with my cursor and change my reticle. So that is the size that we're aiming for. Definitely not this size. 
So when we set it to auto, it's going to snap to that size that we originally have. And to be honest, unless we've got Eagle Vision, that's not going to work out for most of the people playing our game. So what do we do? We go back to playing and we set it to Force Software. Force Software will allow you to manipulate the size of the cursor. So if I had a reticle size that was quite big, so I had my original one was 720 by 720. If I play now, you'll see that I got a big old reticle and that's a little big for my liking. Something like this is a lot better. I also didn't set up the hotspot uh, according to where it's meant to be, so I'm trying to figure out where our actual hotspot is is a little difficult, but it looks like it's in that corner. But when we have it here, it's centered nicely. So let's get our reticle, which is 360 by 360, and drag it into there. One more demonstration. And there you go, there's our reticle. Nice, shiny, gradient riddled reticle. And so that looks pretty good. That looks like something that we can definitely use. And if we don't want to use this as the final thing, hey, we figured out the method so we can change things up a little later in the future. But for now, that looks pretty good. You'll notice that I can change the appearance of my reticle depending on if I aim at a certain game object in my scene. I think it's an order that I should demonstrate to you how I've done that because that's going to be a big part. That is going to be pretty much all we'll be doing for our enemies in future parts. So now you can see the gizmos for my main camera. You'll see that we have these little dots off to the side here. I'm currently on a trackpad so it's a little hard but you'll have to trust me on this. Our cubes that you saw in the camera preview and in the game, they're all the way over here. That means they're in front of our plane. Our plane is sitting behind and these are in the foreground, which means that when we're not interacting with these, when we're not hovering over these, then our cursor is going to be set to that reticle one. And then when we are hovering on these, our cursor is going to be set to this reticle active. How have we done that? Now implementing this is super simple and it's something that you guys can have a little play around with. All you gotta do is create a game object. So I made a cube. You're not gonna touch the mesh renderer or the collider or anything. All you're gonna do is add a script just as we did before. The only difference is, instead of new script, we're just going to use that pre-existing script, which is reticle. And once you have your reticle script attached to this, all you got to do then is drag in your alternative reticle and make it so that the hotspot is at the center of your reticle. So that will be half the dimensions of your image if your reticle is exactly in the middle of your image. Once you've done that, you can hit play and test it out. So here I have my default reticle. I got a new one, got a new one, got a new one, got a new one. So I was kind of inspired by things like uh, Halo. In that game, you say you have a assault rifle. When you hover over an enemy, it gives you a bit of feedback in the game just to tell you, hey, if you pull the trigger right now, you'll actually hit that person that you're aiming at, which is just a little bit of an assist for our player. Helps them know that, you know, everything's working right and that they're aiming in the right direction. Well, that's all we got time for today. I thought it was going to be a short part, but uh, looking at the recording time, maybe not so much. Well, thank you guys. This has been another press any button tutorial. Hope you enjoyed and hope you can implement this into your own project. Remember what we've done here can actually have an impact in a wide array of different games. So even if you're not making a rail shooter, just try this method out because maybe somewhere down the line, you'll need to change the appearance of your cursor. Anyway, I've spoken for long enough. Until next time guys, press on and keep creating.